Hello second graders, before we get started with our second project, I have a special Hi friends, it's Miss The Pass. Just wanted to say that I'm so happy that you're making so much artwork and I can't wait to make more art with you really soon. Hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Hello second graders, we are going to be talking about mobiles and the artist by the name of Alexander Calder. So let's take a look at him. This is a picture of him in the middle of his favorite thing to do, which is creating a sculpture. He was born and raised in Philly. So he is uh, an American sculptor. He really likes sculptures, which means that he really liked to create works three-dimensionally. So he wasn't sitting down and drawing on a piece of paper. He was working with wires and metals and lots of it, other materials to create three-dimensional forms. One of his favorite things to do was to create mobiles, which would be hanging from the ceiling because he liked to challenge the way that people thought uh, sculpture should look like. To this point in art, people thought that sculpture should be stationary. That means that they're not moving and that they should be created from the ground up. Calder, however, thought that sculptures should be um, hanging from the ceiling and instead of us moving around and uh, to be able to enjoy the sculpture fully, that the sculpture move itself. So he created these things called mobiles. And I'm going to show you a couple pictures so that you get a better sense of what I'm talking about. A mobile is something that is hanging from the ceiling and oftentimes when he created his pieces, he used metal and rods um, and ended up using some paints to add different colors. But there's something else happening here. Take a moment and see what do you notice? What is interesting to you about this piece? What are you wondering? If we were to see this piece in real life, it would not look this way all the time because it would be moving. Any small wind, any breath could make it move and it would completely change the way that the structure looks. And that's one of the beauties of his work. He really wanted his work to move around. Um, he played a lot with different shapes, as you can see on here. He has some interesting shapes down here, some other ones over here. It looks like he was really into circles. And there was something else that he spent a lot of time doing to make sure that his mobile would move accordingly, because it's not just all lumped to one side. There's a fine balance that he created. How do you think he managed to balance it all out? What did he do? to make sure that it wasn't just going to go off to one side. Let's take a look at another one of his pieces. He added a lot more to this one. And I really love this piece because there's this powerful red shape up here. What do you see that is the same or different from the previous one? So now that we've taken a look at a couple of his pieces, we are going to create our own mobiles. Alrighty, in order for us to go ahead and get started, you are definitely going to need a clothes hanger, some recycled materials. I use some yarn to add some color to my hanger, a white piece of paper, some markers, some glue, and definitely some scissors. I didn't really like the metal on the hanger and I wanted to change it up. Uh, I use yarn, but you can definitely use some paint as well. Then I took my recycled box and I cut it into several sections. This is going to help me create different parts of my mobile. I also use some toilet paper rolls, um, some really interesting things that you can create. You get these really awesome circular pieces if you cut it the long ways, just make sure you watch your fingers. There's also a really fun diagonal line that you might see on your toilet paper rolls. Um, if you open it up along that diagonal line and cut along it, you get these really awesome kind of twirly whirly uh, pieces of your toilet paper roll. I really liked the way that they looked and thought that it could add a lot of movement onto my mobile and it would look really, really cool as it moved around the same way that Alexander Codler's sort of moved around as well. I didn't like how blank it was, so I decided to add lots of colors and designs to the circular pieces. I got a little bit more creative and added lots of designs on there. Um, you can't see it very well because it's a 
too bright, but I added lots of polka dots, swirls, and just kind of playing around with my colors so that it wouldn't look blank and boring when I added it all together to my mobile. These are the only markers that I had available, but if you have paints, you're more than welcome to use paints. If you have color pencils, I think those would look great as well. Um, and I went through and with these sort of twirly whirly ones, I thought it would be really cool to not only add color to the outside part of it, um, beware your hands will get messy. My fingers ended up many, many different colors by the end of all of this coloring but also to the inside so that as it moved around, you'd be able to see different colors on the inside. And I thought that that would be a really cool effect to add on to my mobile. So it's something that you can do as well. Once I finish adding color, I twirl them again to give them that nice shape. And here's a finished look at some of the pieces. Then I move back to that cardboard piece and these are gonna be elements that are gonna help put my different components together. So I took my Sharpie and fought the white on one of the sections and then the back just stayed like the regular box. Then in order to attach all my pieces together, I decided to use paper, but I didn't want to just leave it white and boring. So I took my Sharpie and added lots of different designs. And here's an example of what they look like. Then it's the fun part. You get to really play around with how you want your mobile to come together. Thinking about how you could uh, implement some of the things that we saw in those slideshow examples and figure out how to balance it all out. You don't want to put all your pieces on one side, maybe the colors that you added, think about how they would go best together. And I laid it out on the floor before I committed to one single idea. And you can see me here moving them around in different ways that I thought that they would go well together. I decided to add the most amount of pieces to that center area and shuffling it all around. Um, once I was happy with it and thought that that's the way that it would look best, I sort of even laid out my pieces of paper to see which design on uh, the paper would look best with the colors and where I like them most. And the final step is going to be to take a glue stick and attach them all together. This can be tricky, especially at the top, so I actually just looped my paper around the hanger and then figured out what would look best. Here's an example of what I came up with, and um, I hope that you have a lot of fun, and I'm excited to see all your mobiles.